This movie's power level was over 9,000. Faster than a bullet train and stronger than a beast, here's how Dragon Ball Super went Super Saiyan at the box office. This weekend brought the surprising news that the number one box office hit in America is an anime feature film. The movie in question is Dragon Ball Super Superhero, based on the long-running and enormously popular Dragon Ball franchise, and the 21st feature film in the Dragon Ball saga overall. On August 21st, The Hollywood Reporter announced that Dragon Ball Super Superhero is the number one movie in the country, and according to its distributor Crunchyroll, its opening weekend haul of over $20 million is enough to make it the best global box office debut in history for an anime in theaters. The movie opened on more than 3,100 screens across North America, and it handily beat out its major new release competition like the thriller Beast, which sees Idris Elba fighting off a lion, and slightly older releases like Bullet Train starring Brad Pitt. One advantage that Dragon Ball Super Superhero had over its competition is that even though we're still technically in the summer blockbuster season, movie premieres were light heading into the weekend with only Beast starring Idris Elba opening. It debuted with a relatively modest $10 million. The Hollywood Reporter called that a disappointing start, but on the upside for anime fans, this did allow Dragon Ball Super Superhero to take the top slot and make anime history in the process. Both Dragon Ball Super Superhero and Beast were targeted towards similar audiences. While Beast reportedly skewed 56% male in its proportion of opening weekend ticket buyers, the audience for Superhero was significantly more so, at almost 80% male. The film was also a success among that ever-important younger demographic, as 70% of its opening weekend audience were reportedly between the ages of 18 and 35. If you know anything about the appeal of the Dragon Ball franchise, that shouldn't come as a surprise. In fact, much of the film's current success might well be attributed to that age group's nostalgia for the now classic animated series. Power levels 8,000 power! Wait, it's over 9! The beloved anime Dragon Ball Z first hit American TV in 1996, which means that many who grew up watching the series are now old enough to have children of their own. Nostalgia is a powerful force, and it's impossible to discount it when Dragon Ball Super Superhero has done so well with such a wide release in theaters. The nostalgic appeal of Dragon Ball Super Superhero was no surprise for the cast and crew that helped bring the movie to the US. Speaking to Showbiz Cheat Sheet to promote the film, members of its English-language voice cast like Zach Aguilar, Jason Marnoka, and Sean Schemmel spoke about this very thing. They spoke about how they were delighted to come on board the film as childhood fans of Dragon Ball Z, as explained by Aguilar, who voiced Dr. Hedo in the movie. It's been so surreal. Growing up, watching the show, I watched it in middle school. At every stage of the process, I would say constantly, I've had to pinch myself like, am I dreaming? Is this actually real? Am I actually a part of Dragon Ball? Marnoka, who plays Carmine, had a similar experience, saying, I'm kind of in a similar boat, you know? I grew up watching Dragon Ball Z and things like that, so I had an understanding of this world and the Red Ribbon Army and these characters and things going in, which I don't usually have. When the cast of a movie has such nostalgic feelings for its source material, one hopes the audience will too. If the film's box office performance is any indication, those designs were a resounding success.